and we're back. Uh, so yeah, it's been a while since I've done any work on the aircraft, unfortunately. Um, you know, our life's hard at the moment and things are uh, difficult um, and uh, it's winter and, you know, uh, dark and pretty miserable. Although actually in the workshop it's surprisingly uh, pleasant. Um, we've also moved to a slightly new regime on uh, the uh, the bedtime for the kids. So um, we're putting them to bed separately and so rather than doing either all or nothing of an evening, um, I'm doing one of them and uh, Beth uh, is doing the other one. So consequently neither of us really have um, full evenings but anyway um, everyone's in bed um, we have one who needs to be at least so yeah so I'm back and I'll do a little bit of stuff here again I think this is going to be a short one I think it's probably a good idea for me to just do some short ones just to keep um, in the habit uh, and also not to uh, bore on too much about stuff um, I'm just trying to keep it vaguely interesting so um, yeah, scarfing together longer ones is what I have to do. I have uh, um, sketched out most of the actual basics of the one side of the fuselage now underneath all the rubbish that's on the build table at the moment. Um, another endless con constant nibbling away job is just trying to keep the place tidy. Um, so yeah, so I need to turn some relatively short lengths of uh, 15 by 15 um, millimeter uh, section material into uh, longer bits. So to do this I have to refer to the mighty um, AC43.13-1B which is uh, I believe widely considered to be the uh, authority on these matters I think everything that uh, everything else you read about repairs and alterations and general handling of aircraft uh, is derived from this uh, publication at least in the English speaking world maybe um, it's an American book which is uh, okay by me Americans invented airplanes more or less so they probably know what they're talking about um, so there's two things that need to, I need to address. One is the material that I'm going to use to make sure that that is um, up to standard. And secondly, to um, make sure that the scarf joint that I put together is, uh, is, is, is properly, properly configured. Um, so the first uh, issue, just move this. Selection and properties of aircraft wood. The key thing that I'm looking for is um, maximum permissible grain deviation. So basically, you want <coughs> you want your grain running as close as possible to along the length of the piece of material that you're using. Uh, <coughs> if you can imagine, a piece of wood will generally be a lot easier to snap across the grain than it, than it is along the grain. Um, so. Uh, the maximum strength, I suppose you could say, is achieved if the wood has its grain uh, aligned along its um, longest axis, I suppose. Um, you get, if any of you have built IKEA furniture, you get some pretty egregious examples of poor wood in those. I've seen uh, stuff, you know, beds where the bed slats have got a whole a knot in them, you know, pretty much two-thirds of the width of the material so basically there's almost nothing there to give it any strength and consequently all that stuff breaks so um, that's a really bad example of wood uh, what I've got hopefully is a better example the material I've got has been um, was uh, part of the kit of parts that I bought well I'll say kit of parts it was part of the um, part built kit that, I've, that I have bought part built aircraft it's not a kit it was never a kit um, and so I'm just opening up a little bag now which has had it inside this is quite a quite an interesting moment because I haven't really touched any materials in their raw form before this 
So I'll just get that down. I'll stop and I'll get it down and then we'll have a quick look. So here it is. Uh, 15 by 15 millimeter uh, square section. Um, and there's that's the grain, as far as I can tell, that's the grain direction along there. As you can see, it's, it is actually very. So we're looking for really as parallel as possible with the sides. Uh, I would say that that's that's very very good. I think. I mean, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a way a wave in it there. But I think that's okay. They say one in fifteen, so this 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 box here that I've built is one in fifteen. So I mean I would say that I can't see any of this actually. I can't see any of this actually exceeds that. Maybe comes a little bit close to it, but I think that's okay. So, um, yeah, so I will probably go over this material just to take a closer look at it, uh, but I'm thinking that looks, that looks fine. And um, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, what I plan to do is, is, is scarf these two together. Well, so I say scarf these two together, scarf one of these into another piece of this. Um, so, just I'll just stop again and we'll just have a quick look at the other piece. So, interestingly, the uh, these two pieces, I think they're probably all cut from the same, I guess maybe they're even all milled from the same plank, but they seem to be very, very consistent at one end, maybe for uh, three quarters of their length, they're very consistently parallel. Um, and then uh, at the other end, they're both they, they, the grain starts to deviate just a little bit and become a little bit more bit more wavy. I would still say it's pretty good, but um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make my scarf at the um, between the two most consistent ends. Is that the right thing to do? Yes. So I'm going to scarf together where the grain is at its uh, at the end of the the pieces where the grain is at its most uh, consistent, um, and then I can trim off. The slightly more wavy segments at the end to get me to my length um, and then maybe I can inspect them more closely and see if I think they're acceptable for uh, use in some other part of the structure so um, yeah okay I'm gonna just try and get set up now so that I can show um, how I'm proposing to do my um, my my scarf joint okay here's the the plan um, the um, mighty book of aviation uh, repair which I just lost um, and then therefore now rudderless uh, uh, says um, you have to scarf at 15 to 1 so what I've got here is um, I've made a like a box um, so this the the slope along the top there is uh, 45 centimeters, three centimeters in 45 as you run along. So um, to me, that's 15 to one, three fifteens are 45. So um, I also have my router and I have fabricated a pretty simple plate to bolt onto the bottom of the router. Um, that will, Uh, if I put this in the right position, that can slide along the uh, slide along this sloping uh, section, 
and um, oh, no, this is going to be awkward. This will be awkward. Maybe it isn't actually. And the idea is, I'm going to run my material in into the uh, to the box like like that. Um, and then I can operate the router and I can bring it down and uh, and I should cut unless I'm missing something I should cut an equivalent 15 to 1 slope in the um, end of my piece of material which is all good um, what I'm also going to do is I am going to place a piece of sacrificial material underneath, he says, desperately looking for something appropriate. So, yeah, so basically if I, if I put something underneath to lift it up, um, like this, if I set things up right, as I as I get to the end, um, the intention is that the router will run off the end of the material that I'm cutting and cut into the stuff underneath, and that will keep the material supported as it finishes its cut. And we should limit ama the amount of tear out that happens. I think there is still going to be some, but the idea is to try and limit it as much as possible. Um, that's the plan. So that's like that, that's like that. I'll have to contrive to clamp clamp this down as best I can. I'm sorry that's not a very good angle. The problem I've got is that I have to lay the long piece of material along the bench. And so I'm going to find it a bit difficult to change the angle. I suppose the sensible thing to do would be to move the camera, wouldn't it? Just let me move to shaky cam for a second. And I'm also trying to curate the amount of horrible disorganized mess that you see for fear of undermining any hope of appearing to be remotely professional and allowed to do this kind of thing so that what I've got what I've got there is uh, I think will work I'm gonna have to run this back a bit because I think I'm gonna so I think I could almost, I think it would be okay to almost hold this manually and just run it up and down and, until I hit the, uh, until I bottom out on the, on the material underneath. Hmm. That should be good enough. I need to fix, I've bought some, I've bought some, uh, over, these, these are the original screws that fitted the, uh, that fit the router, the tiny. Um, I bought some oversized screws, there they are, that need to be long enough to go through this and then into the router itself, but I need to cut them down because they're gonna be far too long at the moment. Um, okay, right, just gonna, I'll be back. So there it is, um, bolted on. I had to trim a couple of the bolts down because these, these two um, I drilled all the way through, but these two are um, run the holes run up into material, so I had to cut them down. I don't know what how I managed this, but I seem to manage to get one, two slotted uh, ones and two um, crosshead uh, posi drive ones. Uh, I don't know if I did that on purpose. If I did, I can't remember why. It's amazing how long all these things take. It's taken me about probably about half an hour, 45 minutes, just to do a very simple procedure of fixing that piece of material to the, uh, to the router. Um, and that wasn't, I'd already drilled all the holes and stuff, so that's without marking up and drilling. It, it must be about, probably about an hour's worth of work just making that. It's just ridiculous, and it's not like, I'm not sure I was going that slowly. Um, it just things take so much time. So, uh, right, I'm going to try and set myself up so that I can have a go at cutting the first 
one side of the scarf. Um, I'm just trying to work out how to clamp this down. I, th I think I may have to get it towards the edge of the bench and do some jiggery pokery just to get it, uh, get some means of clamping it, clamping this kind of combination down, and then I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll try and do the router in a, routing in a time lapse and, and then show you the result and that'll probably be it for tonight. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll catch you in a bit. I had a bit of a brainwave on the clamping uh, element, um, or at least I hope it was a brainwave. Um, I'm not unwittingly backing myself into some horrific corner, but um, I've uh, I just cut some stock ply and I've run a couple of screws down through that ply, obviously the holes on these are a bit oversized, and then run some screws down into the, the base of the scarfing blocks, which, block, which really clamps that down really tightly. I mean, even the end that's not supported is, is finding it quite hard to move, so that's good. I've checked the, uh, I've checked the alignment, and uh, I think it's straight in the box. Rotors, uh, ready to go. Um, I can start it off back here, there's enough clearance there and I think I'm just going to very slowly and gently work my way down and see what happens. Um, I'm not really a router expert, I'm thinking I'm going to run it at quite a high speed and work very slowly so just um, take material off at a very, very uh, small amount at a time and just work my way down till the end of it just pops off. Okay, um, right I'm going to get PPE'd up and uh, I'll do this on a time lapse and then uh, yeah, catch you after that. I think this is a partial success seemed to work okay um, until I got down to the thin end which is this is probably not a surprise to anyone who's done this before where the kind of the last bit of material just kind of let go and popped out now it's actually it's not far off where it needs to be to be honest um, I'm not quite sure where the old hands at this would know that, in fact, you, you're never going to get that bit to be fine. Um, so what I might, what I'm thinking about doing is just moving the whole piece, just maybe five mil this way, and just running down again and see what happens. Um, see if, see if I can just taking a very thin slice off then gets me to a cleaner edge. I think if that doesn't work, I think where I'm going with it after that is like a very, very sharp plane and actually just use this as my, use this kind of as my start, starting point and then just feather it off with a really sharp plane. So use a sort of hybrid approach. I'm not sure whether we're ever gonna get away from that tear out at the end. Still, it's interesting, right? I've not done this before. So anyway, yeah, okay, so what I'll, the first thing is so I'm going to slide it along quarter of an inch or five mil in old money and uh, and have another go and, and we'll see what happens. That went somewhat better. Uh, apart from when I decided it would be a good idea to route the side of my own router box, but anyway. I think that's, be I think that's nearly there, really. I'm going to have a go at that. Not tonight, because it's late. I'm going to have a go at that with a plane, I think. Oh, I don't know. I just don't know. I can't imagine even like the proper professionals being able to get that end perfect. But Because it feathers off really nicely there, and you can see where it's basically... I run, I ran the right, router right down into the material underneath. It just seems to tear out. There comes a point where something just flicks off out the side. Not sure. You know, I mean, it's going to be very flexible at the end there. So, I mean, even if that's not completely perfect when it's all squashed together and glued, I don't, I don't think there's a significant loss of strength. My gut feeling isn't is that there, there wouldn't be. 
but there you go. So there we go, what have we learned? I slowed the router down a bit on that one as well, which made it just a little bit less hectic. Um, yeah, well, there you go, that's good. That's the first, I think that's actually the first meaningful piece of, uh, uh, meaningful component, if you like, that I've actually made on this build, uh, apart from just arranging things that have already been made or um, doing the paper exercise. That is the first aircraft specific thing I've done. So that's a good thing. Um, uh, uh, next step is to do the other one. Well, make get that to where I want it to be. I'll do some research online to see quite how good it's supposed to be. Um, I'll get to that place and do the other one, and then um, then we'll be at the point where I will glue the first thing to the first thing. That's going to be a really big moment actually, because that we really are making something then when we've created something that wasn't essentially there before. Um, because, uh, yeah, as I say, all I've been doing so far really has been cutting things that already existed into the slightly smaller things. Uh, when we're assembling something that was small into something bigger, that means you really are making something that wasn't there in the universe before. Okay, that'll be it for now. Um, I better call it a day. Um, I was quite pleased with this. This quite, works quite well. This whole thing works quite well, but I was quite pleased with thinking of that because I was scratching my head. Um, there you go. I'll pat myself on the back for that. All right, see you in the next one.